Stan Jibalisco here. I am going to explain uh, the functions of the components in a basic operational amplifier circuit. Uh, this material comes from the sixth edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, published in June of 2016 by McGraw Hill and co authored with Simon Monk, who, by the way, wrote two new chapters, one on microcontrollers and the other on the Arduino device. You will also find this circuit in other editions of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. It is a basic operational amplifier circuit. Uh, component values are not shown because they can vary depending on the frequency that you want to use. An operational amplifier comprises a, 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 at least a one, but oftentimes two or four, bipolar transistor amplifiers whose gain can be varied uh, at different frequencies, not by increasing the actual gain itself, but by causing the gain to be reduced sort of like stepping down on a hose, the, the normal state of affairs for an operational amplifier is full blast, which would be like having the nozzle wide open and the hose untampered with in a hose and nozzle system. In order to control the gain, you provide negative feedback, which occurs through this feedback resistor, and that's sort of like stepping down on the hose and or tightening up the setting of the nozzle to restrict the flow rather than to increase it any further. The normal state of affairs again for an operational amplifier is full gain. The symbol appears like a triangle like this. Plus indicates that the input is in phase with the output. It's called the non-inverting input. And the minus indicates the inverting input, which indicates that the input and output are in phase opposition with respect to each other. The output exists in exactly the opposite phase from the input. And that is how we normally control the gain in an operational amplifier circuit when we want to use that integrated circuit as an amplifier. We provide negative feedback through a resistor. The lower the value of the resistor, the more negative feedback you get because it's going to the inverting input and the lower the gain becomes. If you take away this resistor altogether, you have the thing operating at full blast, which can sometimes, depending upon the particular circuit, be as much as 60 decibels. V sub CC simply refers to the power supply voltage provided to the collectors of the bipolar transistors which make up the amplifier and V sub EE uh, indicates the uh, voltages on the emitters or the voltage supplied to the emitters of the bipolar transistors which comprise the integrated circuit. It's really a very simple circuit inside of here, but it's a lot simpler to just indicate an operational amplifier symbol. It saves a lot of space and a lot of confusion. This blocking capacitor right here uh, keeps the inverting input from being completely shorted out to ground for direct current uh, while allowing signal if you want to apply a signal to the inverting input, which in this case we do not apply any input signal to, the, to that, it allows signal to get through. So it places this uh, point at ground for a signal, but not for direct current because of this resistor, which assists with the biasing of the bipolar transistors inside of this triangle, which are written in invisible ink, so you can't see them, but they're there anyway. The input, this resistor, generally the same value 
as you would expect to find for this resistor, um, but not necessarily. Uh, it provides gain for the non-inverting input, which is the actual amplifier itself, provides the proper direct current bias. The signal is placed uh, is allowed to get through from the input by means of this capacitor, but the capacitor blocks direct current uh, so that you don't get direct current bias disruption of either the non-inverting or the inverting input. Uh, so it just makes sure that all the biases are proper for correct operation of the amplifier, or should I say all the biases are correct for proper operation of the amplifier. So that's what the components basically do. These resistors provide and assist with direct current biasing. These blocking capacitors keep direct current from disrupting the biasing while allowing signal to pass. Here's another blocking capacitor that allows signal to pass but not direct current so that whatever uh, is connected to the output of this amplifier will not disrupt the collector um, bias on the transistors inside. Keeps DC out, lets signal through. But the feedback resistor is the key component of this type of circuit when you want to use it as an amplifier. You can make a potentiometer out of it you can, or use a potentiometer in its place and vary the gain. It would be like a volume control then. But it would be sort of, uh, uh, sort of the opposite of what you normally expect for a volume control. It's reducing the extent to which the amplifier is hindered rather than increasing the extent to which the amplifier amplifies. If you want this thing to serve as an oscillator, you would provide positive feedback and you might connect this resistor to the non-inverting input instead. You'll get rumbling and uncontrollable oscillation and feedback if you do that. Uh, unless you provide a frequency selective circuit for this. But I'm not going to get into that right at the moment. This is just uh, an indication of what the various external components do in a simple operational amplifier circuit when you want to use it as an amplifier. And it, it's most commonly used at audio frequencies. You don't find it as often at radio frequencies, although at very low and low frequencies, it's not too uncommon to find this type of amplifier. This is a, is a broadbanded amplifier because there is no selective uh, characteristic to the feedback component. It will hinder the performance equally at all frequencies, thereby providing a flat response for your uh, gain versus frequency curve. Stangibilisco signing off. Once again, you will find this in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Almost any edition, but in the sixth edition, and it appears as figure 23 3 on page 391. Once again, Stangibilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.